time change thing, right? Let's stand up to our feet. We're going to sing a new song this morning, and it says, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Freedom. Okay, we're going to do that again. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You guys ready to sing that this morning? All right, let's wake them up. Come on.
you are here with us at City Church this morning. If you're watching us online, we're so glad that you're joining us as well. We want you to experience that freedom too. Freedom in his presence in this worship.
to each other and then seeing the world change and it's been called renew all and so we believe that as we renew our relationship with God in our marriages and our friendships in our community that all can come to know him amen? amen amen so this morning in our closing worship I want to invite you pastor G is going to come down front pastor Alex is going to come down front I want to invite those of you who weren't here 10 weeks ago uh, to be a part of this still so 10 weeks ago, about 300 of you came down front and put on the cross what you were in 2019 that has held you back, or a person that you've been praying for in your family that doesn't know the Lord. And I mean, there are some serious things that are up there, addiction and heartache and finances, and, and so many of you came forward and you said, you know what, in 2020, I'm putting it all on the cross. I'm taking it all to Jesus Christ. So we want to give an opportunity for a handful of you that maybe weren't here 10 weeks ago to still get a chance of worship to come up and do this. Just to have a moment at the cross or to have a moment with Pastor G or with Pastor Alex in prayer. Can we do that this morning? Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Lord, we pray you'd move on our hearts this morning. Yes, to worship where we're at, 
but to move out this morning and trust you with everything, God, and renew our relationship with you. And maybe we're praying for a loved one that's far away. Maybe we're praying for a son or a daughter or a grandchild that has left your care and has left following after you. And today, Father, we are trusting you to do it. We are, by faith, writing out this thing that's held us back, God, this sin in our life or this stronghold in our life. And we are saying it is not who we are anymore today. You, Lord Jesus, have declared us to be deeply loved, completely yes. forgiven, fully pleasing, totally accepted, complete in Christ, a brand new creation. And so we declare it in our worship, we declare it in our prayer, and we declare it today by coming forward and putting it on the cross. In oh, Jesus' yeah. name, in Jesus' name, Amen. and all God's Amen. people said, Amen. as you're moved by the Spirit as we worship, come forward, come as God leads you. Come forward this morning. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever sing. Worthy of every breath. Thank you. 
out. This is our renewal. We put our trust in Him alone. Sing it out. I will build my life. giving today be glorified and our worship be glorified and the studying of your word be glorified lord and all that we are and all that we do let it all glorify you today god we pray father that we would not go through the motions today or go to church but we would be the church today and then when we leave this place we would be the church and when we go into our homes and our communities this week that we would be the church god Flow through us, God, as you flow into us. Flow through us, God, in all that we do. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning if you're able to. God's power is so strong in this place. We have closing announcements in our service uh, today. But I do want to mention before we worship God uh, through our giving, if you're a first-time guest, this is the time. As we bring up our house lights, we ask you to make sure to fill out a card with your email address, phone number, um, so we can reach out, touch base with you, get to know you. And if you have prayer requests, they go right here on the back. That's for visitors, members, first-time attenders. We pray for those not only on Tuesdays with our whole staff and our prayer team, but all week long we pray for those requests. So please fill those out right down here where it says prayer requests with your name on the front. We want to be able to lift that up. One other very, very pertinent or important um, announcement. The Cashmans will be leading worship next week in our service. They're coming to me. Yeah. Awesome. From Nashville, Tennessee, great worship leaders, uh, great disciples. They're doing an Easter co uh, concert that Torch will be announcing. We have tickets for sale. But next week, they're going to be with us in service as they're traveling with Citizen Way and they're traveling throughout the state of Florida. They're just gonna come and lead us in worship. It's gonna be a great, great week. So bring your friends next week and get your tickets today after service. 
lastly, I said this to the 9 a.m., but I'll say it to 11 also. Thank you guys for being in church today. We know when you lose an hour, a lot of people, the first thing that they skip is church uh, because they're tired. Is anybody dragging a little bit this morning from losing an hour? Why do they do this to us? Can't they just make it a half an hour? Does that have to be a full hour? Do we have to do it at all, right? We have all these questions. And so it is good to see you guys in church this morning. God bless you as you gave your tithe and your offering. It makes it possible for us to have our students go to Tennessee on a, a trip of training and discipleship last week. They just got back Sunday night. We're so excited. Our students are back. They just got it after their class. They help us to be in the community every Thursday. They help us do missions here locally and around the world. And helps us to have 33 ministries that are changing lives right here on the Treasure Coast and beyond. God bless you. Thank you for your faithful giving. God bless you as you give this morning.
Good morning again, City Church. In this series, we have looked at moments in the Bible when an entire city or an entire people renew their relationship with God. We started off with Nineveh, where Jonah did not want them to renew their relationship with God, and they didn't even know they needed a relationship with God. But by the end of the story, they all came back and gave their heart to a God they didn't even know. And then we moved on to Gideon, where all of the people were scared to death of Midian. Midian had robbed them of all their resources, their relationships, the, the equivalent of their money, their businesses, everything that they grew. Midian came and, and would take. And they were hiding out in caves. And in the midst of this great time of need, of loss, of pain, of fear, this guy Gideon comes into the story. Now, when my kids were little, um, my team just left that's here today, and he still would say that he doesn't like the book, but I know he still likes the book. There was a book called Big Bad Bunny. And so I would read Big Bad Bunny to my kids, and I would get this voice where I would go, Here comes Big Bad Bunny. He's going to take all your money. And this is what Big Bad Bunny would do. He'd go and he'd take everything that everybody had, and when the kids were little, they'd scream. And they'd hold on to me. And now that Elijah and Luke are little, they do the same thing. And the truth is, that's what Israel was like. Midian was big, bad bunny that was coming to take everything they had, all their money. And what did they do? They screamed and they hid in the caves. Now, now, Gideon and his people cry out to God. Just like the kids scream for me when I'm reading it to them, or for their mom, and they get away from me because I'm terrorizing them, one or the other. The people finally cried out to God. you got to cry out to the right place in your crisis, in your loss, in your pain, when the enemy is knocking you down. And we saw with Gideon, God shows up on the scene. He sends a prophet first. Then he sends the angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord does this to Gideon. He gives Gideon a new name. Here we are in Judges 6, 12, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon. He says, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Now, do you remember they had these t-shirts for years? They still have them come out every once in a while. That say, I'm with stupid, and there's an arrow that points. And if you're walking with your friends, people start laughing at you if you're on the side of the arrow where you are the person that's stupid. This is the amazing thing with God, right? First of all, even when we are stupid, God never thinks of us as stupid, never calls us stupid. And when we are with God... We never have to worry about someone putting us down or coming against us or calling us a name, even if there's truth in it. God looks at you and I and he says, if I'm with you, you're not stupid. You're not a loser. You're not a failure. You are a mighty warrior. Amen, church? If the Lord is with you, you are a mighty warrior. Joshua 1, 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Why? For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Not just to the mountaintop, but to the valley. Not just to the winner's circle, but to the last place circle on this earth. In eternity, he is a winner and we are winners. It's already won. He says you are not who you think you are. Church, in 2020, forget about what somebody said in 2019. Forget about what somebody did, did or put online. Forget about what you think about yourself. God says you are a mighty warrior. Amen? Amen? You need to know you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be discouraged if God is with you. And Jesus came and gave his life so that you can renew all of your relationship to him and then know that you know that you know that Jesus is with you. He lives in you. You're a mighty warrior today. Amen? So renew all. It's really God's supernatural plan for our lives. And in my life, I've pleaded with God at times. I, sometimes I've played the part that I thought that God wanted me to play. And, and I've put God in a box at times. But it's only when I stop, drop everything, give God all of it, that I see the supernatural take place. There's a lot of things we can make happen with our plan. But it's only when we trust God that we see the impossible take place. Look at Luke 6, 38. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap, for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Now, we miss the supernatural because of what Luke says. Instead of going all in 
with God's supernatural plan, giving everything over to him, our hurts, our habits, our hang-ups, our dreams, our victories, our failures, our reputation. Instead of giving it all to God, we hold on to it. We try to use our own strategy or this world's strategy. Or we try to mix the two together. Look, God and this world's strategy don't mix. When you mix them, you end up in a pain. In fact, if you have a dream and you mix it, it's going to mix it, okay? It's gone. Deuteronomy 8 talks about this, verse 17. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. And we can change the word wealth, this life, this family, this business. We can even say this ministry. If you're in a church, this ministry, that's what did it. My power, my strength, my hands are the ones that did it. But remember, God says in verse 18, the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors, as it is today. So I want you to write this down. If you're taking notes, there's, there should be pens. Right? We can hand sanitize it. We've been doing that. Um, because, you know, there's a lot of fear out there today. You know, with all the steps we're taking, some of you saw me elbow bumping the band members. With all the steps we're taking, and all the way we're changing our life, and all the urgency, and all the fear we have, as very well we should be careful when there's a virus out there. Boy, I wish we took one-tenth of that and took our relationship with God that seriously. Yeah. Yeah. I wish we did. Yeah. I, I wish, you know, it's, it's much, I, I, I'm washing my hands now, and I used to wash them like this, and now I'm going like this, and I'm counting to like 40. Man, I, I wish I was spending that time in the Word. It was just as critical, yeah. right, to say, you know what? I better be in the Word extra, extra time today, over time today. And so when we get in here, we look at this. I want you to write this down because this is the three-word summary of the message today that you've got to leave this renewal series with. God does it. God does it. Let's do it. Okay, everybody in here say God. God. Everybody here say does. does. Everybody say it. it. Let's do it together. God does it. God's the one who does it. He's the one that unleashes his supernatural blessing into our life. And when we complain, or when we embrace fear, or when we embrace sin, it blocks those blessings. When we hold on to things, it blocks the blessing. That's why God's word says, don't hold anything back. Give, it will be given. Let go of this world. Let go of the, the lust of flesh, the eyes, the pride of life. They drain the life right out of us. Let go, because God is the one who, who does it. You may get financial wealth with your plan on this earth and end up miserable. Some of you would like to try. That's a joke. But some of you would. But if God doesn't do it, unless the Lord builds the house, the labor is in vain. It means it's worth nothing. A rich man took everything he'd accumulated in this world. He melted it down into solid, pure gold put it in a special briefcase and went to heaven with it. He wasn't going to let anybody have it. It was his. He got to heaven. St. Peter said, nobody really comes with a suitcase. What's in the bag? He says, let me show you what's in the bag. He opens it up. Oh, man, he thinks he's going to be, you know, just superstar in heaven. He opens it up. St. Peter says, you brought pavement with you? <laughs> Church, perspective. God does it. We should hold nothing back. That's the problem, isn't it? Many of us are saving our time or saving our service or our forgiveness or our love for another day. We're holding on to something we value for a day that we don't even know if it will ever come. Today is the day to hold nothing back because God is the one who does it. This is what I love about the story of Gideon. He goes through so many, we weren't even able to touch on but just about a third of the trials and the challenges and the things that he went through. But when God comes to him and says, hey, I'm here to bring a healing, Gideon says, what you've done for me lately, God? You haven't done nothing for our people. And then God brings him to a place through a sign, and there's a fleece, and there's a sign that he believes. And he starts to hear God's voice, and he starts to realize God does it. So with that kind of skepticism on the front end, God, you're not gonna, you can't heal us, but you haven't done anything for us. When I share today's message, it will show you how strong his faith has grown and how far we need to come 
in our faith. Here we are. It's time for battle. It's time for a battle cry. 135,000 soldiers are ready to fight the Israelites because they're not going to lose their cash cow, so to speak. Israel grows all the food. They steal all the food. They're not going to let go of that. Verse 1, early in the morning, Gideon and all his men camped at the spring of Parath. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley, near the hill of Morah. Verse 2, the Lord said to Gideon, all right, God, I'm ready for a word. I'm ready for a word of provision. I'm ready for a word of victory. But he says, you have too many men. Gideon has less than 40,000 men. The enemy has 135,000 men. And God comes with a word that you have too many men. God does it. God does it. Do you think any leader of an army in the history of the world has thought, I have too many men. I have too many fighters. But God was with Gideon. Gideon doesn't question it. He doesn't say, God, what have you done for me lately like he did earlier? He goes with it because he wants to be in the flow of what God has. And what God wants Gideon and us to know today is that I do it. God does it. He says, you're not going to trust in you. This is you guys and me. You're not going to trust in you. You're going to trust in me. And I'm going to make sure, God says, that you hold nothing back. That you give me all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. So the odds are impossible. But God goes even further in the mission. He says... With the little that you have, with the impossible that you have, it is still too much. Give me all, renew all. Take that in. Sometimes we think God is walking away from our life because we're losing things. And some of you maybe have been in a rough car accident in the last year or had a business fail or a relationship fail. Probably all three of us. I mean, I could add maybe one more. We probably all could raise our hand and fall in there somewhere or a son, a daughter, or a grandchild that's failed, but it's gone through a tough time. Maybe you've lost someone. You say, God, why are you taking this away? Why are these things walking away from me? But God says, guess what? I will show you that no matter what you've lost, no matter what you don't have, that I am God and that I have a plan and that I will provide. And sometimes when we have a lot of something, I know for me it's hair. I've got a lot of hair. It's tough for me <laughs> to take care of it all the time. It's tough to take care of. Many of you can feel my pain out here. So a lot of times when we have a lot of something and we lose it, we feel like we've lost everything. There's people in the stock market the last two weeks who feel that way, right? I, oh, everything was great. I've lost it all. And God comes in sometimes and he says, look, you're going to trust me. I do it. I'm the one who does it. Not the stock market. Not your plan. I and the one who does it. He says this in verse 3. Announce to the army. Anyone who trembles with fear. May turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left. While 10,000 remain. I tell you what. If it's 135,000. Against less than 40,000. And the commander says. Nobody's in trouble. But if you're scared we're going to die. And you want to leave. Go ahead and go. I, I think that I'm surprised 10,000 stayed. Because the 10,000 that stayed knew that their odds just got less and less and less. But God says, hold nothing back. And he knew that even though they were depleted, that they needed to get rid of the soldiers on the front end that were afraid. If you study this, and I encourage you to do so on your own, you'll see God even have a plan for the 22,000 soldiers. They came back into the battle later. Romans 12, 11, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. See, fear causes us to hold back. God knew that. He said, let's get rid of those that are scared because this first part of the mission, you got to be bold. Be strong. For the Lord your God is with you. you got to be bold for this first part. So let's get rid of any of the people that are kind of shaking in their boots a little bit. And God says, don't be afraid. I know it's tough. You've been beaten up. You've been called every name by the crowd. You're tired. But if you dive into me, and today as us as a church, if we dive into Jesus and we hold nothing back, he will renew us. He will give us that new name. God is calling us to renew all by giving all, holding nothing back, even when it looks impossible. Look at what it says in Joshua. Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. 
Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God plus me is a majority. Amen? Amen? It doesn't matter if I'm facing 135, a million, 13,500. It doesn't matter. The problem is that most of us would rather be a chicken than a pig, right? This is what I mean. Most of us would rather be a chicken than a pig. There was a pig and a chicken, and they were walking through town. They were the poorest part of town. None of the children had food. None of the children had good clothes. And the chicken was moved to compassion, and he said, Hey, pig, he said, Let's give these starving children some breakfast. Let's give them some ham and eggs. And the pig said, buddy, for you, that's a donation. For me, that's a final sentence. <laughs> and so most of us, when it comes to giving all, we'd rather be a chicken and say, let me give you a few eggs. Not let me give you everything. And so a lot of times the tough thing is that we go from being scared and being chickens to being selfish pigs when we're not willing to give it all up. Now, God's supernatural plan always comes to us in a way that when there's something amazing that's going to happen, we come up with all the reasons why it won't work. It looks like defeat to us in our natural eyes. Our tendency is to tap out, to give up to walk away, to let go. Or there's some things you're facing this year that they, it's not about tapping out. You're like, there is a giant in front of me and there is no possible way. This will, many of you have said this year, this will never get fixed. This will never be right. We will never overcome this. I will never be okay. Listen, you are, instead of declaring the word of God over your life, you are speaking death to it. You are speaking defeat to it. You are speaking distress. And, and depression to it. And God's supernatural plan looks like in the natural, like it's a defeat. Think about the children of Israel, right? They got out of slavery. They got away from uh, the, the pain of being beaten every day and having to work and be locked up and chained up and have their children killed. They got away from that. And within almost no time, they had the Red Sea in front of them and the chariot behind them. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh baby, let my people go. And, and here they come, and impossibly in front of them, and impossibly on the backside. It looked like defeat. It looked like nothing but defeat. There was no way out. And a lot of times, God's supernatural deliverance or plan looks like defeat in the natural. What did God do in Ephesians chapter? Here's what the people did. Verse 12. Did we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. That's their faith level. All they see is the impossibility. All they see is the defeat in the natural. But God comes in and he takes the Red Sea and impossibility and he opens it up. They pass through and then the other impossibility, the army of Pharaoh is swallowed up by the first impossibility. And the two impossibilities come together and the people are free. They're free. It can look like it's impossible. It can look like it's defeat. And God takes those impossibilities from certain defeat to amazing victory to show you that God did it. God does it. God is the one. Amen, amen. Now Pharaoh and all his army are doing the dead man's float. If you know this song, maybe you don't, but it's all right. Many times in my life, the victory that God has planned for me requires me to believe the impossible. It's in the Bible. Abraham, Moses, Joseph, the disciples after Jesus was crucified. It didn't look good, but it was all good. Amen. Amen. God has it under control. God has this. Whatever we're facing, God has it. And my man Gideon is down to 10,000 men. But in verse 4, the Lord says to Gideon, there are still too many men. Wow. <laughs> Take them down to the water. And I will thin them out for you there. And God basically says, I'm going to tell you who's going to go with you, who's going to stay, who's going to fight, who gets to go home. Now, we know none of these guys are afraid anymore because everybody that was shaking in their boots left. So everybody that's scared, that, and, and you know what? Maybe the other 10,000 were crazy because they weren't scared. <laughs> and God says, I'm going to thin them out again. So Gideon, I love the fact that Gideon's hearing God's voice. All through this. We need to do that minute by minute. Verse 5, Gideon takes the men down to the water. 
There the Lord told him, separate those who lap the water with their tongues as dogs from those who kneel down to drink. Um, 300 of them drank from cupped hands, laughing like dogs. So understand, some of them got down and drank with their head all the way down the water. The other pulled it up and laughed like a dog out of their hand. This was before plastic straws were banned, <laughs> but they must not have had any reeds or any straws around. And so these guys, I, I mean, just the, just the idea of getting, you put your head in the water and suck it in the water, that's what the majority of folks did. These other guys lapped it like a dog. Maybe they were more focused or stronger or alert. We don't really know. There's theories, but the, but the, the reality is we get down to 300 dog lapping fearless men. The Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 men that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the others go home. So Gideon sent the rest of the Israelites home, but kept the 300 who took over the provisions and the trumpets of this. 300 men against 135,000. There's more than that, but we know Judges 8.10 gives us this number that there are at least that many swordsmen. 135,000, 300 versus 130. You thought Hollywood, Hollywood steals everything. 300, it's right here in the word of God. And so it's impossible. One man in the army of Israel for every 450 in the army of Midian. Anybody ever felt that way? Felt like you're facing those kind of odds? Anybody? <laughs> like it looks like it's over before it even began? How? How can Gideon follow these crazy instructions? This is it. God does it. God does it. He has learned to trust God through it all. He doesn't question it all. He questioned that God would even deliver them in the beginning when they had more numbers than this. But now he doesn't even question it. He believes what we declare this morning. God delivers. God delivers. Romans 7, 25. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ. Hey, I don't know what you're facing this week or in 2020, but won't you memorize that verse, church? Maybe you can say it every day. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Whatever you're facing, whatever impossibility, whatever victory, thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. We've got to let our resources go. Let our army walk away. Empty our hands. Stop holding things. Free ourselves. If you're holding on to this world, then you don't have your arms free to hold on to Jesus. Church, have you ever had a delivery that didn't arrive on time like it was supposed to, that you really needed? <laughs> a piece of equipment or, or maybe something that was for your kids for a play or, or maybe something that was a piece of clothing that you were going to wear. Just something, maybe a check. Anybody had a check not show up on time? <laughs> Back when they mail checks. Just take a picture of the check. It's in your bank. So I just rocked your world, many of you. You didn't even know that was out there, but it is. You're looking out the window, looking for a truck. Now you're looking for a truck. I never thought I'd be staring and looking for a truck that says Amazon on it my whole life, but now I am. <laughs> and you, it doesn't show up, or you get the wrong thing, or it's broken. And this is the great thing. God delivers. God never does that. He's never late. He's never early. He's always right on time. Amen? When I said Gideon, Gideon's faith, could it be this strong? And I love that God knows him. He knows you. He knows me. He knows each and every one of us. And he's made us all in his image and likeness, but he's also given us this personality that's unique. Every DNA, every, uh, you know, everything, every cell of DNA on us is different than someone else. God can do that. And so God gives Gideon another sign. He knows, even though he hasn't asked for it, he knows he needs it. And he knows that we need it. The camp of Midian lay below him in the valley during that night. The Lord said to Gideon, get up, go down against the camp because I'm going to give it into your hands. Verse 10, if you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant, Pura. So um, what is God doing here? Well, God is showing Gideon that he loves him so much. He knows that his mighty warrior needs a sign, loves a fleece, 
loves a confirmation. And in this instance, we see an amazing part of God's amazing character. Here we see that when God delivers, and he always delivers, he even gives us a tracking number. You know this word is full of tracking numbers. Philippians 1, 6, he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. John 3, 16, God so loved the world, that means God so loved you, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Do you know that God's word is filled with tracking numbers so that we can trust God that he does, he will, he never fails, he will deliver. And that's what faith is, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God's word, word, verse by verse, is tracking my journey and your journey and letting us know deliverance is on the way. He says, I know the plans I have for you. I know them. I have hope and a future, according to Jeremiah 29, 16, not to harm you. Here's the beauty of God's word, the beauty of God's love. Write it on your heart today. You can check any time you need to if you're worried that the delivery is not on the way. You can check every day to see if the delivery is on the way. Psalm 25, 3, no one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. So Gideon gets a tracking number to see that God is going to deliver. And it, he goes down to the camp. So we know he's afraid because it said if you're afraid, go down. The leader is afraid. I'm glad he didn't walk away with 20,000 people earlier. You know, The leader is afraid. Listen to what they're saying. Afterward, you will be encouraged to attack. So here we go. Gideon arrives in the camp with Pura. Uh, Gideon's name meant one who cuts down trees. Pura's name meant branch. If, if the guy in charge of me was named one who cuts down a tree and my name was Branch, I'd listen to what he said. So here we are. So he's on God's clock, the right place, the right time, and he gets to the camp right as a Midianite is sharing this. I had a dream. This is the enemy. This is the enemy. A round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. Verse 14. His friend responded, this can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hand. 135,000 soldiers. They don't know that they've been whittled down to 300, but they got to be tracking them. they got to know they're around 20,000, 30,000, 10,000. And this guy says, God's already delivered Gideon's and our enemy, we are done. We are Holy Ghost toast. We are done. And he already knows it. And I love what Gideon does because this is what we need to do. The enemy has overwhelming resources. The victory, this is like the SEC in college football. They always win. Okay, no guys like that. I got you. So the enemy has all the advantages. They have all the men. They, they're in complete uh, complete control, but instead of being in complete victory and in complete control, they are in complete terror of 300 men, complete fear before the battle has even started. God will do this in our lives. Here's what it is. Worship God and thank him before the victory. Yeah. Worship God and thank him before the victory. Listen, Gideon takes a time. In verse 15, when Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed down and worshiped. He took the time to give God all the praise before he even saw the victory. By faith, because it, it was already done. And, and when he gets back up from this spontaneous worship service, he is now full circle, church. He is the mighty warrior. Look, he's got the eye of the tiger. I'm not kidding. He's ready to go. He's on fire. He's all fired up. He goes to the camp of Israel. He goes back to his men and he calls out. He says, get up. Get up. The Lord has given the enemy into our hands. Get up. We're going to war. Battle cry. He gets everybody up. He divides the 300 men into three companies of 100 men each. He gives them trumpets and jars and torches. And he says this, watch me. Watch me. You can hear, I mean, if you've seen the movie Braveheart, this is it. 300 people. Watch me. Follow my lead. 
when I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly what I do. In verse 18, when I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, then from all around the camp blow yours and shout, for the Lord and for Gideon. Church, remember, God said, if you're afraid, go down to the camp, and I'll give you a sign. This guy was afraid less than like three hours ago. He's ready with 300 men to take on the biggest army he's ever seen in his life. He's not afraid anymore. He's saying to his men, watch me, follow me, do what I do. He's saying, I love you. It comes together. 300 men moving through the middle of the night to the enemy's camp. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Amen? Gideon carried out the very first task God gave him at night because he was afraid of being caught by his own people. The very first thing that he did when he tore down an idol. Here we are in the middle of the night, but he's not leading in secrecy. He is leading with fire. And God will give you a sign if you renew your relationship to him. God will give you that dream and that sign that strengthens and ignites you. And when you do... You need to get all fired up. Amen. 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 We should have the same reaction Gideon did. We should go into humble worship and then get up and go to battle. Go do what God's called us to do. Verse 19, Gideon and the hundred men with him reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, just after the change of guard. God's plan again. They blew their trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their right hands the trumpets. Below they shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Look, here's what I see here in this battle plan that God gave them. A big noise, a big light, and a big shout. You know, church, today we need to go to the enemy's camp. We need to go into our community and our home and our churches and our world and we need to make a big noise of God's love and we need to shine a big light of God's power amen, amen. and we need to give a big shout of victory amen, amen. we need to renew all take back what the devil stolen how did this plan work here it is verse 21 while each man held his position around the camp all the Midianites ran crying out as they fled the army of God stood still and watched the enemy Church, I don't know if you're ready. you got to hear this today. Proverbs 28.1. The wicked flee, though no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. You see, the day is coming when the Lord himself will descend with a shout, a big noise, a big light, a big shout. And when we look at this story, I want you to realize God does it. God delivers. God does it. Why would the enemy, who had all the leverage, all the resources, all of the weapons, all the optics, all the advantages in the natural, why would they, that they've been bullying these people forever, why did they run? Was it because of Gideon? Was it because of his army? Verse 22, when the 300 trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. They ran and turned on each other because of the power of God, the supernatural power of God. If you're facing one impossibility, God can turn it around. If you're facing 135,000 impossibilities, God can turn the enemy on himself. And as long as the struggle is to get there, as tough as the battle is, as painful as it is, guess what? When God comes in like that, there's healing. Like that, there's victory. Like that, there's a return. Like that, we're set free. Like that, we're made new. God will take your biggest challenge and use it to bring the victory in your life. Genesis 50, 20, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. To accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. You may think your story is a, a story of tragedy. God's going to take it and make it a story of victory. You may think your story is a story of loss. God's going to turn it around and see lives saved through it and make it a story of redemption and of salvation and of his will being done. God took the obstacles. Here's what God did in this story. Remember, God does it. If you're still taking notes, write down impossible numbers. Impossible numbers. Actually, write that down. Don't write, make up impossible numbers. 
impossible numbers. Here's what God did. God took the obstacle, which, is, which was impossible numbers, 135,000 to 300, and he turned the numbers against themselves and sealed a supernatural victory. Do you know demons flee at the name of Jesus? Yes. Hearts are healed in the name of Jesus. Families are restored in the name of Jesus. And the bigger the impossible number, the bigger the enemy, the bigger plan that our big God has. Amen? Amen. I'd ask you to go big in 2020. A big picture. Invest everything and have a grace perspective because we serve a big God with a big plan of big love for each and every one of us. And we want to share that with this big community, the Treasure Coast that we live on. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. In our closing, with nobody looking around, our worship team is not coming up this morning. I just want to talk to you in these moments. Many of you are facing, I believe, impossible numbers. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, many of you are facing the impossible numbers of cancer cells the doctor says you have. Many of you are facing the impossible numbers of the times your heart has been broken. Many of you are facing the impossible numbers of the times you have blown it. Maybe it's your age you think that it's an impossible number because you're too old to do what God wants you to, or you're too young to do what God wants you to. Maybe, maybe someone told you, here's the, the number that is your IQ, yes. and you say, it's impossible. I can never be smart enough to do what God wants. Maybe you looked at your bank balance this week, and it's an impossible number because you said, I'll never be able to pay the bills. I'll never be able to help people. I'll never be able to go on that vacation or, or help my family. I don't know what the impossible numbers are in your life, but I know this. Nothing is impossible with Jesus. Yes. Nothing. Yes. And if God is with you, if God is with you, you are a mighty warrior. We just have to give him everything today. With our heads bowed, with our eyes closed, I want to pray with you. I want to pray a powerful prayer with you. You don't need to raise your hands here today. In your hearts, if you're facing that impossibility today, I want you to let go of it. You can say it out loud. You can say it uh, in your spirit. You can get down on your knees in your seat. You can do whatever you need to do. But I want you to let go of it today. Lord Jesus, king of our hearts, king of our lives, God, our everything, you are the one that does it. And so today, Lord, many of us are facing impossible numbers. Many of us are facing many situations. We have an impossible number of impossible numbers, God. And this morning, Lord, we know and we declare and believe that you have a big plan, God. And that you are the God of the possible. That you make all things possible. That you overcome the impossible numbers. So this morning, Lord, with my dear, dear friends that are here in this service. We lift up and let go of everything, God. We cast our cares upon you. We let go of the past, God. We let go and renounce, God, the habitual sin we have embraced today. And we say, set us free as only you can. We've tried in our own strength, Lord. Let your strength and your spirit rush in and begin a deliverance story. God, this morning, we renew our relationship to you and to our family members and to our community. And we believe and we ask and we trust and we, we, we plead the blood of Jesus over this community that all would come to know you. And Lord, I thank you that today, just like Gideon having that first conversation and, and, and choosing to walk in your plan, I thank you that today that there are, are many who will take that first step to say, all things are possible in Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. I thank you this morning that this will be the first time that many will say, if God is for me, who can be against me? And if the Lord is with me, I'm not Tim, I'm not Joe, I'm not Carol, I'm not Natalie. I am a mighty warrior in the kingdom of God. More than a conqueror, an ambassador, a son or daughter of the most high, a prince or princess in the kingdom of God, a child of the most high. Created for greatness, destined to change this world. Not in my strength but in yours, because God does it. We declare, we believe it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Watch this closing video clip as Pastor Alex is coming up with our announcements for this morning. By the way, if you weren't here last week, a great message preached by Pastor Alex. Check it out on the video. Thank you.
Cummings, husband and wife duo Jonathan and Brittany Cashman are Christian recording artists, worship leaders, published authors, and speakers who applied their years of ministry experience to help serve and build the local church internationally and across America. They will be with us soon. The Cashmans have written many albums and books, including the Savior Musical and Devotional series, their newest worship CD, City of God, and their latest book on discipleship, Go. Together, they utilize the creative arts to present the hope of the gospel and encourage the church in the great commission to go and make disciples. The Cashmans travel full time with a desire to see people grow in their relationship with Christ through authentic worship, relevant evangelism, and purposeful discipleship. Make plans to come together to experience this powerful time of ministry and worship. Don't miss it. All right, good morning, City Church. How are we doing today? You do have the victory, amen? Amen. So just real quick, three simple things. I'm going to let you go out of here because I know all y'all want to take a nap. So <laughs> Friday the 27th, the Cashmans will be out of their concert. As Tim mentioned, they will be here next week on the 15th. Uh, we are selling tickets, $10 for adults, $5 for children. It's going to be out on a table in your lobby. So that is the Cashman. So as Lisa's coming up, tell me the two things that you're going to do. The Cashman. Buy a ticket. Gonna buy a ticket. Okay, three things. Buy a ticket. Invite. Buy a ticket, you're going to come and you're going to invite somebody, right? So buy a ticket, come and invite somebody. Um, I want to hand it over to Lisa. Lisa is our representative for Karina and they have a walk for life. So I'm going to let Lisa talk to you a little bit about Walk for Life and what she's doing. Thank you, Lisa. Good morning, everyone. Uh, just a quick message to you all. Um, the Walk for Life is happening on April 4th, Saturday, a week, um, a month from now. Can't believe it's a year already. And I, we have several ways that you can be involved. You can be a walker yourself. You can sponsor me. You can help somebody else be a walker etc. If you're interested and you can help in any way, um, whatever way you choose, there's a table out there and I'll be happy to talk with you about more of it. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. All right, one last aspect of Women's Ministry Lift. You will be meeting at Applebee's this Saturday at 10 a.m. and there will be having the information table out there. So all three things, you can go out in the lobby for the cash rooms. We have a table. For Lisa and Karen, there's a table. And for women's ministry, there's a table. So if you need more information, uh, please go out there. They'll be glad to help you and answer all your questions. And we're going to pray, and then we're going to be dismissed. Father God, we thank you that you fight our battles. That when the enemy comes in like a flood, Lord, you put up a stand against him. But the battle belongs to you, Lord. And Lord, all things, and there is nothing impossible with you. So let us walk out of here in victory knowing that you've got it, that you've taken care of it, that you won it on the cross and through your resurrection. And we've read the back of the book, and the book says you win. So we praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody have a great, great day.